This video is going to introduce the concept of data flow diagrams and show the four primary symbols that are used in these diagrams. So data flow diagrams, as kind of the name suggests, shows the flow of data within an organization. It doesn't focus on who does what within a process, but just who is sending in data and who is receiving information. So it is a graphical description, and it shows where the data comes from, where it goes, how it gets from one place to another, and at a very high level, where what processes are formed on the data, and where is it stored. So this is just one example of a data flow diagram. This is of the customer payment process. So we have a customer sends in a payment, and then we process the payment. As you notice, this is very high level description. And from that step, we send a deposit to the bank. Remittance data is also sent to the next process, which is update accounts receivable. We see that data is stored in the accounts receivable data storage and then a report of receivables information is set, sent to the credit manager. So there are four basic elements that make up a data flow diagram. Data sources and destinations, data flows, the transformation processes, and finally the data stores. So let's go through each one of these in more detail. So we first have the data sources and destinations. These appear as squares within the data flow diagram. Now one of the key things is that you put a noun in the, within the square. So usually this would be a person, and I would put in their position rather than a name, an organization, or a department, uh, or a collective group of individuals, say customers or suppliers. So these are the groups that either provide information into the process or receive data and information out of the process. So in our data flow diagram we looked at earlier, we can see that there is a data, a data source of customer and we have two data destinations, the bank and the credit manager. So the bank receives the deposit and the credit manager receives the receivables information. Next we have the data flows and these are shown as arrows. Notice we can have an arrow point in one direction if the data flows only in one direction or we can have an arrow that is double-sided to show that data is flowing in and out to the same destination. So they're showing what types of pieces of data are flowing between processes, are incoming from a data destination, or outgoing, or incoming from a data store, or outgoing to a data destination. So if we look at this customer or this payment process in a data flow diagram, we can see we have a data flow of the customer payment going from the customer, the data source, to a process. We have a deposit going out. We have a single flow remittance data going between the two processes and the receivables information going out. All of these are one directional. Then we have a bi-directional arrow going to the accounts receivable data store. This is showing that you read in information from that data store and write information back. Next we have the circles and these are transformation processes. So this is where the action happens. Uh, you usually or you will put these as verbs. So you put a verb within the circle. So think of words uh, to get you started if you're having trouble naming a transformation process update. 
process, uh, prepare, create. Start with one of those four words, and that will usually help you find maybe the right word to describe that process. So they are representing some transformation of the data. So whatever data is coming in is now transforming maybe, and, and we'll see it in the next slide, you know, the deposit is created or we take out the accounts receivable information. This could be done manually or computerized. And really that's because the data flow diagram is focusing how the data moves through the process more than how it is being done. So if we look at this data flow diagram again, we see that there's two processes. We have one, which is process payment, and the second one, which is update the accounts receivable. And finally, we have the data stores. So these are appear as two horizontal lines. Uh, it is shaded for the purposes so you can see it on these slides. So it's basically a repository of the data, whether it's permanent or temporary. So in the case of our customer payment data flow diagram, we have the accounts receivable. So we need to read information, so we need to be able to read in what a customer's current balance is. And then based on the processing of the payment, we would need to adjust that balance and write that balance back out to the storage. All right, this concludes a basic overview of data flow diagrams. In the next video, we will show the difference between a context diagram, a level zero, and a level one diagram.